welcome to Caravan Escapades. This is an exciting one for us. We're finally off after three years of postponing it and moving it and rebooking it. We're off to France. We can't wait. Um, we've literally packed up, we've hitched up, we've loaded up and we're on the road to France. Um, we've got uh, probably four hours down to Dover, something like that, and then we've got a sail in it. 10 30 or 10 past 10 something like that and then we're into france for three weeks so we can't wait we're absolutely over the moon with excitement really really looking forward to it <laughs> darcy may <laughs> laughing at me i don't know who's most excited me darcy or them Dar Dar fist bumping, Dar yeah. darcy may's fist pumping in the back there because she's excited as well in fact last time darcy may went she was three years old so how much of it she can remember i, I don't know but she's certainly going to enjoy it this time um what we're going to do i'm not going to do lots of or one one big vlog for you when we get back we'll do some little bro vlogs we'll do some little vlog can't even say the word I'm that excited we'll do some little vlogs um, and try and keep them kind of short and sweet just some reviews of what we do in the places we go in and that sort of stuff so anyway we're hitting the road we're on our way and we'll see you soon so we're a little over two hours drive into the journey we're still really really excited um, but it's on the Tuesday the 19th of July which is the hottest day of the year um, you'll know that if you're watching this recently but if you end up watching it down the line and the only kind of worry that I've got is I've got the tire pal on the <laughs> caravan what are you laughing at there? Only worry you've got. The only worry I've got so far, because we're going to have a great holiday, is I've got the tyre pal on the um, on the caravan tyres. It's a twin axle and temperatures on the caravan tyres are getting in excess of 50 degrees um, and don't seem to be sort of dropping. They sort of, well, say don't seem to be dropping. We've had them down to about 46, 47, but we've just stopped at the services near Stansted Airport just to grab a quick drink and they've kind of shot up again. Um, and I don't know really what I can do to kind of bring them down because what seems to be happening as well is that- <laughs> We on them. <laughs> we on them. Sorry, excuse my wife. I just um, think I'm trying to be all trying to be all serious with you here. <laughs> She's talking about we're, we're, we're weighing on the tires. We've got a lot of water on the tire to cool down. Yeah. Um, so they're kind of they're a little bit warm, um, but temperatures are quite sorry temperatures pressures are quite high as well because the increased temperature the pressures increase. So I've just got to keep an eye on it. But I guess if I didn't have the tire pal, I wouldn't know anyway. So. Uh, yeah, hey ho, but it was just uh, just to bring you that bit of information and be rudely interrupted by my wife with useful suggestions. <laughs> Sorry if you just missed that, it was a big sneeze from Claire. Um, right, well, we're about 30 miles from Dover. We've had a really good trip down up until about the last sort of two hours. Um, really, really uneventful. Um, but then we kind of get onto the M20 and there's cars on fire, there's cars broken down, there's lanes closed, um, there's junctions closed, all sorts of stuff. And we're now, uh, I don't even know, oh, I think we're now on the A20. We've kind of come off the M20. We're now on the A20 at a place called Charing. Uh, so 
yeah 20 miles away traffic's moving slow who knows so our actual book fair is not until uh 10 past 10 um at the moment it's saying we're kind of going to get to dover at half seven left home about half two um it's about 206 miles i think from home to dover so yeah not too bad just to say it's a great journey down um it's great to have the air conditioning in the car not too bad just really the last bit that's caused a few problems so we'll see you when you get to dover see you when you get to dover we'll see. so we'll see you when we get to dover so we've made it we've got here we've arrived we are just approaching the port of dover um we are in a bit oh watch where you're going mate welcome to youtube uh, no, he's got no t-shirt on, Darcy May. So, there's the ferries in front. We are travelling on P&O ferries. Um, originally, it was booked three years ago, and it's just a credit that we've been kind of carrying over for the last three years. So, we kind of got to use the credit. Would I have chosen P&O? Yeah, Please probably not. The um, at the roundabout. But, yeah, it is what it is. So we are on P&O, um, we are just now about to enter the port, just make sure, I'm probably in the wrong lane here, as I'm chatting away to you, here we go. Don't be frightened, it's fine, there's nothing to be worried about. I think Darcy May's feeling a little bit nervous, she's fine though, but we've been on ferries before, but I think because it's been such a long time, um, She's worried in case we get on before her. We're not she gonna get on we without her. We're all, on. we're all gonna be in the car together. No, I know that we drive on. But, uh, Here we go, cars and caravans. Look, we've got to follow this one. <laughs> all right, we better get all our paperwork and everything else ready. So we'll come back to you shortly and let no, you know how easy it was to get through all this bit. Immediately. Just a quick update, we haven't kind of got in the port yet. We're still in the queue. In fact, let me spin that around and show you. So we're still in the queue there. And I know there's probably, I'm guessing 10, 12 vehicles in front of us. We've probably been here for about 20, 25 minutes so far since we kind of came onto the video or switched off the video from you previously. So big signs up saying, get your COVID pass ready or your COVID vaccination pass ready uh, and that sort of stuff um, passports all those sorts of things so yeah border control border checks it is what it is it's not been a long delay so far um, I'm guessing we'll probably be about another 20 minutes or so but I'll let you know well we just started to move we've been sat probably for about 50 55 minutes now since we arrived here um, they are just moving it's a little frustrating little bit frustrating because the lane that we're in hasn't been moving but the lanes to the left of us um, so the two lanes to the left of us have been pretty much quick flowing and uh, moving quite freely so I don't know whether it's just a case of you takes your look when you uh, when you arrive in um, into the port whether you choose the right lane but which lane is the right one so uh, but we are moving we are just about to go through the barrier um and get towards what they're calling frontier control or border control again they've just opened up both the barrier uh, both the lanes on the left hand side and letting them kind of come through as well who knows but we're nearly there might have sussed out why there's been a bit of a delay we're in the far right hand lane um all bar one lane and while we were sat there a coach came through um, and kind of bypassed us all now I'm guessing what's happened is, is the coach has gone through and if you look at the top of this right hand lane it's got a sign for coaches there so I'm guessing what's happened is, is the coach has gone through stopped and they've had to check everybody on the coach um, which has obviously then caused our lane to be delayed so meaning we just sat there for so long so more of the story is when you come to Dover don't go in the far right hand lane as you may get delayed a bit you want to go in the uh, the left lanes where you can so we've got through that first um, basically French border control bit it's taken us about an hour from arriving the port to get to that bit now we're just kind of heading towards check-in so we just what driving round um, I've got to go over here so yeah check in for p o ferries this way so we're just heading down to check in now 
but it does look very, very busy because the check-in's all the way around that side. <laughs> so we'll come back to you in a bit. So we're just at check-in now, so check-in's just ahead. Hopefully we've got three or four vehicles in front of us, so that shouldn't take too long. We've done all our paperwork, actually we've done all our pre-boarding paperwork, done all of that online. Um, our ferry is due to depart at 10 past 10 and it's 8.30 now, so we should have plenty of time. So, still stuck in this queue, haven't moved anywhere for 10 minutes or so, sort of three or four cars in front of me. Um, not sure what the delay is, is it because people haven't got their paperwork ready, their pre-boarding passes, their um, Covid certificates, all that sort of stuff, and they're having to do it at the barrier. I mean, there, there is only one barrier open at the moment, um, so whether it's anything to do with that, who knows. So we got through check-in, we're here on the dock side, let me just spin you around and you might be able to see a bit, I don't know how much you can kind of see. So we're here waiting, um, our 10 past 10 ferry is now delayed till 23.35 and the strange thing is that we were originally booked on a 23.35 but then P&O basically phoned and said um, we've cancelled that service, it's now 10 past 10. So. Hey ho, we've still got plenty of time to get to our site tomorrow anyway, so the plan is, is, is get across, drive for an hour or so and stop and get a head down for a little bit and then we'll carry on to the site tomorrow. So we're here, we're at the dockside and it's what, it's 10 to 9 now, so a couple of hours yet I guess before we start boarding that sort of thing. So we're here in the queue, uh, we've arrived, we checked in, our sailing's been changed to 23.35. Uh, a little bit suspicious about that, they're still on the board down by the services, it's still saying 22.10 sailing is still going on time and there's been a constant flow of trucks um, working the way around and kind of loading, coming down on the A20 as well. Um, they've got stacks and stacks of trucks there, they've got police kind of only letting them few, through a few at a time. I could be wrong, my suspicion is, is we've been bumped from the 23, sorry, the 2210 to the 2335 and they're just literally loading the 2210 up with trucks. Again, I could be wrong, we were originally booked on the 23.35 and then we got a message from um, P&O to say that that service wasn't running anymore um, and it was going to be and they moved us forward to the 22.10 now we get here and they tell us we can't get on the 22.10 because it's been delayed sorry I had to stop talking then because they were making an announcement and I can't remember what I was saying but basically I think it was about the fact that I think we've been bumped anyway and they're just loading up um, the 2210 just with loads of lorries and things like that um, it's stopped now but there was literally a constant stream going across the end there um, so yeah we're here <sighs> any better than when we've traveled before I don't think so to be honest with you I mean the last time obviously we traveled was in 2019 so it was pre brexit pre-covid pre the p o troubles that sort of thing um it's not been great this time down at the dock the journey down has been fine but certainly different than before um as i say the reason we had to use p o was because we'd already prepaid it um and this had just been kind of rolled on from uh, from 2019 onwards um i don't know it just okay maybe there's some extra checks but i just don't know just feels like service not being great and probably unnecessary delays who knows um will we travel piano again probably not um i think we might even try and give the tunnel a go next time um or try one of the other crossings i know a few people are trying the Brittany ferries from um is it new haven to dieppe that way or one of those other crossings so i think we'll kind of look at that as well so not sure i'll be doing piano again um in fact probably won't be doing piano and quite piano won't be doing p and o again quite fancy giving 
um, the Euro Tunnel a try. I mean, I have done the Euro Tunnel previously, but I've not done it in previous years with the caravan. So we'll look at that. I think what's put me off with that in the past is kind of the cost and that sort of stuff. But I understand with Tesco vouchers and there's various other schemes where you can probably bring the price down or maybe even just look at your um, your crossing times or the time of year you cross. Unfortunately, now Darcy May's in school, we have to cross at um, in school holiday times. Anyway, just a quick last one. Um, these are the cars kind of lining up, ready to get on our ferry. Uh, and I've barely seen any caravans on the way down here. Really not seen any at all. And I actually don't think there's any others in the queue. I think, yeah, it's just kind of motorhomes that sort of stuff i've not seen another caravan at the fort so it looks like we might even be the only caravan on the boat anyway we'll catch up with you probably when we're loading well the plot thickens actually let me put a light on here see if i can make myself a bit lighter um, the plot thickens um we've just been called forward it's now 22 15 uh and we've been told there's a boat coming in and we're going to be put we shouldn't be on that one but we're going to be put on that one um and for our inconvenience um one of the managers has sorted out free teas and coffees well he said free drinks first of all but then he changed that to teas and coffees so yeah um <coughs> been very different to the slick operation that we've experienced down here before So here we go, we're about to board Dover 9, P&O crossing from Dover to Calais. Still not sure what time we're kind of supposed to be crossing. It's not scary baby. Look, we're going on to the ferry. See where they send us, whether they, if they send us on this one we're going to stick out I think. Or maybe not, maybe not. squeezes down the next one and we get to the front So that's it, we're on the boat. Let's get off and go upstairs. So we're on the ferry. Uh, it is quite quiet actually, there are a few people around. Uh, pretty much everything's closed though. Um, there's obviously a very different change in the staff. Um, all the staff here look like they're from um, basically non-domestic, um, if that's the right way to put it. Um, We've just had an announcement to say that free tea and coffee, was it Claire? Yeah. Free tea and coffee and water from the fridge is available. Um, I think in the main canteen, but it looks like the bar areas and stuff like that are closed for the day. Uh, not going to be open. So uh, we'll take a wander up and have a look. But yeah, it's clean, but disappointing. Very disappointing. It is very warm on the boat as well. Whether they've got air conditioning or not, I don't know, but it certainly doesn't feel like it. Um, uh, this will be the free drinks. So it's basically just machine drinks, water, that sort of stuff. Yeah, free water from the fridge and free tea and coffee. So we're down in the family lounge. Um, yeah, it's all right, it's a bit quiet. Um, Looking a bit sort of worse for wear, a bit worn out. Um, but I guess it's the state of PL yeah, at the minute. Service isn't great, we still have no update about what's happening. Um, all they keep doing is tunneling about, in broken English, I might add, tunneling about free tea, free coffee, free water in the canteen area or in the what do they call it the food market area um not you'll be sailing in 10 minutes no apologies sorry for the delays or anything like that um yeah i mean i, I kind of wasn't expecting the crossing to be great with what's been going on with pno and as said before the only reason we kind of used it was purely for the fact that um it's been rolled over for the last two or three years and we'd already paid it anyway so 
definitely won't be using p &O again. We'll be looking elsewhere, looking at the tunnel and probably looking at other crossings. So we're still not left port yet. It's now nearly 20 to 12. I think we'll be departing any moment now. Uh, this time of night, you'd expect it to be quite cool, but it's, it's like an oven in here. You can probably see the sweat on my forehead. Um, it doesn't seem to be any air con or anything like that. And to top it all, we've just been informed that the crossing will take an hour and 40 minutes rather than the normal kind of um, 60, 70 minutes or so. Uh, so not only are we late, we're also going to have a later crossing. But oh, one good bit of news is I've just been down to the canteen area and paid for some food. And I have to say, the food was very good. Um, even the other bits that we didn't try all look very good. So one bit of good news is the food's not too bad but bad news is it's overpriced and expensive. Well, we finally set sail. Um, at nearly five to midnight, we've set sail. Still warm, although it does feel like the engines are moving now, that the air conditioning is kicked in and we can feel a cool breeze. It could just be the fact that we're, we're coming out to sea. So, boat's turning round uh, and we're, headed, we're ready, getting ready to head out through the, uh, the Dover port gates. So I've come up to the outside deck, you probably can't see very much and it's probably quite windy as well but there's Dover, there you can see the lights in the distance, there's Dover as we leave Dover and over that way, I don't know whether you can see anything, over that way is Calais. So we'll see you in a bit. So just to to the shambles, we've probably been stood around for 20 minutes or so now at the top of the stairs. I mean, we've been on the boat sailing for over two hours. Um, and nobody seems to know what to do. Nobody seems to know about letting us down the stairs. Um, I think it's down to lack of experience of the crew that are uh, operating the vessel at the minute. Uh, obviously those members of staff that were gotten rid of um, knew the routines, knew what to do, all that sort of stuff. But it's just pathetic as you can see we're all literally stood around top of the stairs. The boat has stopped. It's been stopped for, I don't know, 20 minutes, something like that. Nobody's moving, nobody's going anywhere, no announcements. I have to say this has probably been from start to finish one of the worst crossings I've ever done with PO. Well, here we are, we're in Calais, we're departing the ferry now. Um, it's great to be back in France for the first time in quite a while, um, three years or so. So we've been all excited, but oh, what a bit down of a journey that was. Um, it was, yeah, just not great. I mean, obviously you've seen the commentary and the things that happened and just the lack of information. Um, not a great caravan journey, oh, sorry caravan, not a great ferry journey at all. Worst we've ever had. Um, it was like we're walking on a deflated uh, airbag. You know, worse oh, than, um, worse than even, you know, back in the 80s when I used to kind of come back and forth from Germany all the time. Uh, maybe it's my fault for blooming using p and um, but you can tell there's a definitely lack of experience from the staff there. Anyway. We're in France, woohoo! We're not going to let it let us down. Uh, we're here now, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, let me just see where I'm going. We're really looking forward to our journey ahead. Um, yeah, and we'll come back to you soon. Good morning. Well, we stopped in uh, one of the motorway airs for a few hours last night just to get our heads down and get a bit of rest. Um, it's rained and it's still raining now. In fact, if I swing you around quickly, you'll be able to see. So it's raining, but we're not put off, it's fine. Um, so yeah, so we're heading down to our first site, Cap Camping Des Four Vents, I think, which is caravanning of the Four Winds or something like that. Um, so yeah, we're heading off there. Um, quite rural, it's probably about uh, 
um, what were we saying there, 10, 15 minutes off the motorway? Yeah, I think it's um, about 20 minutes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, not too bad. I think it actually should be just over here on the right somewhere according to the sat nav. So we'll take a look. Turn right just here. I'm wondering if it's behind you can't see it, but there's some conifer trees and stuff. I wonder if it's just behind them. And there's a sign, anyway. Again, it's about 15 20 minutes from Euro Disney Park. Darcy makes a sweep in the back, so she can't hear me. We have said. seen the odd side. It's a nice spy game yeah. with Disney characters oh, just to keep the children time. entertained. So, so she's none the wiser. So it should literally be up here on the right hand side. So you go down, look, and then turn back in. Yeah. Come back and come back on ourselves. I think it's where this car's just coming out now. Yep, this is the one. So we need to let them out. It's a week and there's more cars coming out. We're gonna have to do a big swing in. Oh, somebody else coming out of the caravan. Just to point to note that it can be a bit tight. Where are they? At the first caravan site, sweetie. Huh. We're just gonna turn. Have to back up a bit. I'm just waiting for a must be dropping barrier keys off or something like that. I wonder. It's all right, darling. It's still raining, isn't it? Obviously, being quite a big rig, we're going to have to take a bit of a swing at it once this gentleman's out of the way. Go. Now let's give it a swing round. Oh, visitors. Is this the exit? It doesn't say the exit, no. Well, it's a sign to come in. I think you're probably going to go and have to open the gates, clear. Yeah. Can I come? Right, we'll come back to you in a moment when we know what's happening. So we got through and here's the quaint little reception in the front here. So uh, yeah, let's go and get checked in and we'll come back to you in a bit. So we've arrived and we've set up. Um, unfortunately, it was in torrential rain. It was absolutely chugging it down with rain when we got here, but we're all set up now. The rain stopped, it's starting to brighten up. This is our pitch, um, very large, spacious pitch. Uh, nice pitches, in fact, um, kind of, well, not really fully serviced, but serviced. So you've got along the back here. Hang on, what's Claire shouting? What do you want? Oh, can I, Claire wants the keys for the caravan. Bear with me, because um, we're just going to wander up and have something to eat. So, yeah, you've got um, every pitch has got a point at the back. You've got your electric on there. There is a tap. Um, it's a shared tap, but I, because there's nobody else at the moment, I have literally just kind of connected the hose to it because we're only going to be here. Um, for one night as well, but we're taking a quick drive around the site. Sorry, we're going to be here for two nights because we've got a day out tomorrow before we start heading south again. But it is a lovely site. Um, I can imagine when the sun's out as well, which hopefully we'll find out tomorrow. It's very spacious, lots of things um, to do. It's got a swimming pool, various different activities. It's reasonably remote, so kind of if you want to go visiting anywhere, you will need to get on a bike. Uh, and that sort of stuff but it does have facilities on here there's a snack bar sort of thing which we're just going to wander down and have a look at now so there are several shower blocks uh, on the site here um, this is one of the older ones i'm not sure what's supposed to be in here oh that's your chemical toilet waste disposal um then what have we got this is the older less comfortable one has been explained to us i think some of the others have been uh, refurbished all the grass pitches here, certainly all the ones that I've seen are, sorry, all the pitches here, certainly all the ones that I've seen are grass pitches. Uh, there's a lady, so we won't go in there. But typical general sort of washing area, so you've got disabled showers, you've got um, 
washing up, to, uh, sorry, sink to do washing up. Then you've got the um, gents' washrooms, which seems adequate, seem okay. Um, not massive by anything. Oh, there's a toilet's not massive by any means. Hello, that's me in there. Um, but they did say that the other block is probably better than this one. I suspect this one uh, needs updating, needs filling up. But you can see from some of these pictures, I mean, that's just one pitch. I mean, it's a huge pitch. Um, you could probably quite easily get four cans on there if you wanted to. But these are, as I say, these are some of the pitches. Um, looks like they've got some seasonal pitches, maybe. Um, but again, you know, big pitch there for sort of one caravan. Another pitch there. And you kind of drive down this lane bit here. Another pitch there. The bottom end of the site seems to be quite busy at the moment. Um, but this top end doesn't seem to be sort of so busy. But very large pitches. Like Claire was saying, the great thing with the French pitches or the sort of uh, foreign pitches is they're not rigid like the Caravan and Motorhome Club pitches are that you've got to put your caravan in a certain way. So like with a pitch like this, this big pitch here, you could put your um, caravan or your unit motorhome kind of along the back here and then you'd have all this space in front of you. You kind of have your own play area and all that sort of stuff. So really, really are some, uh, some great, very large pitches. And the sun's coming out now as well and it's really, uh, really changing the effect of the place. I mean, some of the pitches have kind of trees in the middle as well, so you've got a little narrower area getting into your pitch. But again, you could swing in, get your caravan lined up against the back hedge there. So over here is the other toilet block. So let's go and take a look at this one, see what this one's like. Yeah, here's your motorhome service point. Uh, they have fresh bread here every day, um, so fresh bread at this boulangerie there, so you can buy fresh bread and croissants and pastries and all those sorts of things. Um, here's the other block. So the gentleman one, this side. Maybe just slightly newer really, I guess. Yeah, I mean it's... Uh, yeah, facilities are a little bit newer, quite small showers, but certainly bigger than you've got in your caravan. Disabled facilities, so that's a disabled shower. Um, yeah, a couple of old oh, disabled toilet, and then kind of normal toilets, sinks, but you get to wash up and walk out over the pitches, and you've got more bins there as well. And again, you've got your normal sort of washing up area and uh, sinks, washing sinks. Yeah, so you can do a little bit of washing, that sort of thing here as well. Well, the sun's started to come out now and what a difference that makes. You can feel the sun um, on the back of your neck on the back of your head really really nice and we're just wandering over to uh, the snack bar area so to eat in or take away um, should be open from about four so we'll take a seat i suspect the snack bar opens up there but it's, not open. it's not open just yet darcy may but it should be open soon so we'll take a seat We'll wait for it to open. So as you can see, the snap bar's opened. Um, they're just prepping up and that sort of stuff. So well stacked snap bar, good range of um, foods available from sort of whole chickens, roast chickens, pizzas, burgers, salads, that sort of thing. Um, the only thing I would say is that it was supposed to open at four o'clock and nobody kind of turned up until 20 to five. So I take kind of the opening time as maybe a bit of pinch of salt, but we're going to order some food, we're going to give it a go and see what we think. 
So our food's been ordered. Um, I think both Claire and I have gone for the big cheeseburger and fries, that sort of thing. Darcy May's gone for a margarita pizza. Uh, we've got a couple of Cokes to kind of go with it. And we're going to sit out here. Um, now it's got warmer and enjoy it uh, and enjoy ourselves. So I think what I'll do is let's bring this first vlog to an end. I think we'll call it um, France part one uh, or Mommy, our trip to France part one. Um, there's the three of us there. Cocoa. So we're, we're going Cola. to the place tomorrow that Darcy May doesn't know about yet. So the surprise, what but you, 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 guys know, you, you guys know where she's going. Do you I'm know any adventure. idea where you're going tomorrow? Uh, I know. No, we're not telling you. You have to wait. Um, swimming pool. Swimming pool. Yeah, well, she thinks she's going to a swimming pool. She will be surprised tomorrow then when she finds out where we she's going. We might be going to a swimming pool. We might be going to a swimming pool. We're not going to say yet. We're not going to say yet where we're going. You guys know, as I've mentioned it in previous <laughs> vlogs anyway. Um, so, yeah, we'll call this um, our French trip 2022 part one, cool. and then we'll do other bits. Do you mind? You two, I'm going to be doing a vlog here. <laughs> <laughs> so Mama, we'll tell me what it is. Mummy's not told you what it is. What she told you? Swimming pool. Swimming pool. Okay. Well, let's, let's pretend it's a swimming pool. Water park. Water park. Uh, yeah. um, but we'll call this the end of part one. So this will swimming be pool. the end of part one. Our French yeah. trip 2022. Um, yeah. We'll catch you on the next one. I'll let these two carry on natching away. <laughs> anyway, but thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hit the notification <laughs> bell so you get notified when we put out new videos. And we'll see you very very shortly when we bring you part two